in the rambling garden, imagining she heard them whispering in the stirring of the breeze. When her eyes had adjusted to the darkness, she lifted her shorn head and gazed westwards towards Kensington Village, to the deserted palace that was shrouded in wooded parkland, then north to the lonely fields stretching up to hilly Hampstead. And finally she looked to the east, following the winding desolation of the rough turnpike road, Nighttime haunt of thieves and robbers, as it led through somber heath and furzy woodland to the Knightsbridge Turnpike and thence to far off London. No stars tonight. She ran back down into the house, her satin shoes pattering as she went, her silk wrap billowing behind her. She hurried to her dressing room and looked for the little lacquered box that she kept in her writing desk. She opened it with frantic fingers and saw that her gold had gone. She closed it and put it away, staring into nothingness. There were footsteps in the passageway outside. She turned and saw her maid, Emily, fluttering distractedly, murmuring fragments of prayers under her breath. Madame, madame, we cannot find him, and the carriage is gone. Auguste bowed her head in acknowledgment and despair. Is the doctor still here? No, madame. He set up for the city some time ago. He will have reached his lodgings by now. And then someone else was with them, standing silently in the doorway. William Carline, the Englishman, dressed ready to go out in a long riding coat of olive green, with his hat clasped between his hands, his dark blue eyes burned with unspoken questions. He has gone to the city, whispered Auguste. Please find him. Carline's beautiful face expressed no emotion. For a moment he stood so still that the candlelight burnished his long fair hair as if it were spun gold. Then he bowed his head and turned to go. Auguste waited with her hands clasped to her breast for the sound of his footsteps on the stairs. She gazed out of the window into the night until the muffled beat of his horse's hooves on the driveway had faded at last. After that, there was silence again. One by one, the candles in the big house were extinguished. Outside, the trees whispered anew, their branches stirred by a soft breeze that bore with it a promise of more rain. Once more, Guy de Montpellier had gone to London to look for Céline, his lady of songs and flowers and stars. And each night he went, a woman died. Well now, thought Pris. Well now. When Pris first saw the man that night in the tavern, she guessed he was taking something because of his eyes. Opium, most like. She'd seen it before. Gave them darker thoughts than gin. Pris was a barmaid at the Bluebell, a former coaching inn that lay in the Warren of Courts north of the Strand. The inn's customers were mostly lowly folk, grooms and stablemen, soldiers on leave, or street porters and vendors from the market. The landlord.